last week's uh, report by the Department of Water and Sanitation, the blue, the green and the no drop reports, uh, cost a very, very bleak picture when it comes to water quality in South Africa. There is another crisis washing across South Africa, and this is a crisis of clean water. The Blue Drop report showing that 46% of drinking water in South Africa municipalities or out of 46 municipalities, 46% of South African municipalities don't comply with adequate microbiological standards when it comes to quality and drinkable water. That is a major issue. Um, it means that most of us In municipalities in South Africa, in 46% of municipalities, should not be drinking the water that comes through those taps. We should be boiling it. Why isn't this message being driven home to households across South Africa? Dr. Firo Adam is the manager at Water Can. It's an initiative of the organization Undoing Tax Abuse. Uh, Really appreciate your time, Firo. Why does the public need to be made more aware of these blue and green drop reports that shows a very, very, a paints a very, very bleak picture in the water quality coming out of our taps in many of our municipalities across the country. Indeed it does. Good morning to you, Lester, and good morning to all your listeners. Um, yes, exactly, you're right. I mean, people can get sick uh, from drinking polluted water. Um, and so I think that is why it should be a big concern. In fact, it, you know, if you look at the blue drop, which is the drinking water quality, and the green drop is your wastewater, mm. so all your waste that's flushing mm. away, um, those systems are not working properly either. Mm. And that's a problem because that flows directly into your rivers and seas. Mm. We also have the green drop report that looks at the, the standards of water treatment works. It, that report showed that 67% of water treatment stations across South mm. Africa are failing. And then there's the no drop report that says that mm. 47% of our water is a fa- in fact lost or, or unaccounted for largely based on, on crumbling water infrastructure, essentially water seeping through leaking taps, leaking pipes, and simply being lost. Is this crisis level that we're speaking of at the moment? Definitely. For me, I mean, if you just look at those statistics, um, the fact that you know, more, almost half of the, pop- of the population in South Africa are in a place where they can't drink the tap water, your wastewater treatment works are close to critical or not operating at all, and then you're losing 50% of the water that you've already cleaned. So you must remember, we pay for the water to be cleaned, right, as taxpayers. And they're losing almost 50% of it. And then they claim that they can't supply enough water for all of us. What happened to the war on, the war on leaks program that was launched under the presidency of Jacob Zuma? It's seemingly gone One quiet. Guess. One guess. Corruption reared its head, <laughs> and so it got it is it stalled because of of that. So you know, so there was there were issues with it. I think I think maybe maybe if it's better controlled, better implemented, that should happen again because the leaks are are it, you know we're not only losing water through leaks. Let me be honest. So the no drop talks about non-revenue water. So all the water that's been lost and not being charged, and that almost fifty percent. So it, it's, the, it's leaks indeed, and it's, it's um, theft. So there are people that are taking water that are more water than they should be taking, and that is not small theft. So it could be, you know, as farmers, they have a water use license that allows them 200,000 liters. They may be taking more than that. Um, and then it's also non-billable. So the municipalities are not efficient enough to actually bill people correctly for the water. When we went through the Zondo uh, report into into state capture and, and we focused a lot of attention on state-owned entities, uh, Transnet, um, ESCOM, but there was also a, a large part of the Zondo Commission report on, on the roles of, of water boards and the capture of water boards. It's, it's use, using water boards as a means to siphon off from the public yes. purse. Um, the corruption right. in water boards and water infrastructure 
has also evidently been running rampant over the last while with with not a lot of attention. Essentially, the capture of water infrastructure in South Africa. Yes. No, for sure. And and not only that, there's the mafiaization as well. So so you have the capture on the one hand, but I think that it's gotten a little bit better in the last two years with the new minister and the new and his new team. I would say they've tried to tackle some of this. But obviously, you know, it takes a while to root out corruption. But also if you look at the tanks, which is the mafiaization, so in in some areas, and there's evidence of this in KZN and Eastern Cape, that um, people are breaking the infrastructure so that they can get tenders to get what to keep with the water tanks to communities, and and that's becoming a realization where water tanks are supposed to be a short term, um, you know, solution to water supply. It's becoming a long term. Mm. If you look at areas so, like so Hammondskrow s- and areas in KZN, it's years now that people are relying on water tanks. So, so, so you have an actual industry of people who are making money through providing private services if there is no clean and proper and adequate water running through the taps in many municipalities. They're rolling out these trucks and they're calling people, come buy a five-liter can of water which you can use, essentially profiting off the destruction of South Africa's water infrastructure. So they don't, they're don't. not supposed to charge people. They, they charge the municipality for the, for the amount of trips that they do and the amount of water that they take. So just in case listeners are paying uh, water tank people, they should not be paying uh, anyone with a water tank for water. What are the interventions needed? The, the, the part of the report estimates that 4.6 billion rand is required every year to maintain South Africa's water supply assets. It's 15% of the estimated 217 billion that is overall required to to strengthen South Africa's water quality systems? So there's a few things, right? One is within these reports, there are recommendations of what each municipality has to do. And I'd like to urge people, I know it's you know tedious, but to look at the, the reports, there's, there's the national one and there's the provincial one. Look at the provincial one and look at what your municipality needs to do and try to keep them on track. People can say, have you done X, Y, and Z? Or that's the one thing. The other thing is municipalities make money from water services, right? So if you, you pay your water bill every month. Now, in the city of Joburg, for example, um, they, the Joburg Water had a 12 billion rand uh, in their account that, you know, that they could have used for other things. But the city of Joburg, as the municipality, uses that money not all on water, but on everything else to run the, the municipality and only supplies about, well, only allocates about one, 1.2 billion to Joburg Water. And Joburg Water needs about two to three to do their work adequately. So it's also about people being able to check. And I think, you know, we need to demand that our councillors, um, whoever they may be, start playing a proper role and doing those basic checks and put them in place so that the, the funds are allocated to water reticulation. Mm. And if it's not, I think that in five, ten years, we are going to be in big trouble. And it's going to open the door for people demanding privatized water mm. services, which we cannot allow because we still have millions of South Africa who don't have piped water in their homes. Having privatized systems will just damage all of that. I, I don't think we here in Cape Town realize necessarily the scale of the problem. If, if I were to visit family in other parts of, of the country, uh, taking cans of the five liter cans of, of plastic uh, containers to a, a private store, to the local supermarket, simply to get water, yes. which they then use domestically for cooking food or making a cup of coffee. That is standard in many municipalities around the con- the country. Taking your canisters, going to the supermarket and buying yes. water from a private water source. That is that is happening. Um and, and it's it's not it's it's also, you know, people the elderly 
and and people with you know illness cannot carry a 20 liter bucket to the shops and get water so there's lots of people who are actually just not being able to go to get water or, or relying on neighbors to help them and and that is that is a lived reality in many municipalities you are right i mean city of Joburg, which is supposed to be your key economic hub in in the country and in the region have gone through a year a year of this where people have you know had to look for other sources of water they've been watershed they don't have the infrastructure is failing around us and people are relying mm-hmm. on actually getting tanks or buckets or mm-hmm. whatever you know so that is a concern dr Firo adam really appreciate your time she's the manager at water camp